This is Rugby Merlin and welcome back to the channel. This is my preview of Ireland versus Wales. Gatland has announced this team uh, as always pretty early and just one uh, change to the starting 15 and that's uh, Costello. So Costello is back from injury and uh, he'll be looking for a good game. Um, David uh, Jenkins is captain again. Uh, also looking for a good game against very good second rows uh, in Ireland and uh, he's going to want to prove himself. He's done all right uh, so far, but uh, hasn't really stamped his mark on any of the matches he's played in, so he's been looking for a good game. But all the talk this week has been about the legendary Hugo Keenan, and uh, he's picked up a knock uh, against uh, Italy last week, and uh, it looks like he'll be out for uh, this Saturday's encounter, but uh, it's opened up a like a whole box of uh, conversation for us uh, to think about and uh, usually I uh, I keep these videos uh, up until uh, the team has been announced so uh, the reason I've done this is because of speculation about uh, who's going to come in uh, and cover 15 is really really interesting for Ireland. Now what I will say is that uh, Ireland have a lot of options there but they don't have any firm replacement. It's not like they've got a number 15 sitting on the bench ready to go. But um, there's a lot of intricacies in, in terms of how they can uh, cover this position. And they're gonna, I think they're going to have to think long term in terms of uh, who do they want to play fullback when Keenan is not available. Because eventually he is. He's an incredibly durable player. And if you've seen the thumbnail, I tried to put a little bit of a halo around him because he's been such a stalwart of this team over the last two years. And he really has represented the kind of uh, dedication and uh, and good play, you know, uh, throughout the, the the last two years. Now I'll run through the options of uh, what uh, Ireland could do, and then I'll I'll tell you what I think they should do. So um, back three, uh, at the moment you had uh, Nash, Lowe, and Keenan. Like Keenan was running our back three, and uh, particularly defensively. Um, he had a great game offensively uh, against Italy, but uh, Keenan, I think, is known as being a great defensive uh, back three player, and he runs those the two boys on the wing. Now, Nash has just come in. Uh, Lowe has got a lot more experience, but he's a bit raw when he came in, uh, came in himself. So um, they're going to need someone, I think, who knows how to how to defend and how to field kicks in the back three. So uh, someone who played uh, 15 consistently, I think, would be the ideal choice for them. Unfortunately, I don't think they really have that uh, within the Irish setup. Um, a lot of the players they have are extremely talented, but um, they don't have an out-and-out -out 15 to cover. Uh, Jimmy O'Brien, maybe, uh, when, if he was available, would uh, slot in there nicely. But... Uh, they, he's not, and uh, neither is uh, Hansen there, uh, who's out. Um, so, who are they going to choose to cover that position? First up, we have uh, Frowley, um, Kieran Frowley, who's been on the bench for the last couple of matches. Now, uh, he's an extremely versatile player. I believe he plays like centre, but he looks like, when he, even when he plays centre, he looks like a more of an outside half, uh, a number 10. So a very skillful player, good boot on him, a good goal kicker. But um, I, to me, uh, his versatility now is going to uh, kind of hold him back in terms of being selected for 15. Um, they've used him as a covering back on the bench, and I think he's too valuable there uh, to order to swap him out to into a starting place. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, tell me what you think. But uh, I don't think he'll start, actually. Then you have uh, Crowley, who did actually a fantastic job against Italy at uh, 15, came into the line and created uh, Ireland's last try, I believe it was, uh, for Nash. And uh, yeah, he looks like at the moment he's on fire, he can play anyway. You know, put him in any position and he'll do the job. But uh, uh, he should be playing 10, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, he's... Uh, pushed himself way up in front of the other boys in the uh, Irish squad. And uh, yeah, he needs another start at 10, I think. Um, and if possible, he needs to see out this uh, campaign as the starting 10. And that will do him a world of good. And that will be the, uh, the Irish replacement for Sexton then. So um, I don't think they should. Uh, it's great that he can cover 15. 
even though he didn't get a lot of kicks to field uh, in the latter half of the match against Italy. But I think it's great that he can cover there and uh, they'll certainly be used in a crunch. But uh, he's, he's a starting 10 at the moment, I think, and they should stick to that. So I don't think he'll be uh, in at 15. Then you have the kind of talent player who's in the squad is uh, Jordan Lama. Uh, I'm not going to say Lamour, which I use some of the commentators <laughs> pronounce his name as. But um, he's an extremely uh, gifted runner. Uh, I believe he plays on the wing. And you find out with a lot of these Irish backs is that they can play multiple positions. I'm um, not always sure that's a great thing. Um, like Keenan is an out and out uh, fullback, right? Uh, Farrell wouldn't question like whether he can go into the wing or the center or something. He's just fullback. So um, the versatility is great. But also I think it sometimes uh, like doesn't help you as a player trying to get selected uh, when when they're looking for uh, people to fill in now for Keenan, I think they're going to look for someone who is more of an out-and-out fullback rather than a cover player, which I think like Frowley will suffer from. But uh, Lama plays uh, La Lama plays a uh, wing, I think uh, mostly. But uh, he's a very talented runner and very exciting. He's been in and around this Irish uh, side for a, a good few years now, since like 2018, I think. So he's been in and out of the squad and uh, yeah, a great, uh, a great attacking player. He has a fair old boot on him and he's still relatively young. I think he's about uh, mid twenties, 26, something like that. So um, if not now, then when for him, I think is the question that he'll be asking himself. So uh, I think he'll kind of be uh, hoping for a start and uh, you know, uh, why not? I mean, give him a go. Um, Wales is not going to be the, the most difficult test that uh, Ireland have this campaign, but uh, certainly it'll be enough of a test to see what he's made of. So uh, I would say give him a go. In terms of uh, left field uh, calls, I would say uh, maybe uh, James Lowe uh, going into 15 would not be a bad decision, but uh, not for the long term, but for the short term. Um, Lowe knows how the back three, the uh, cover is run. Um, you know, Nash is very ex inexperienced and maybe put um, a more inexperienced player on the wing. I've even used your talk of Gary Ringrose, who's fit again, apparently. You know, that's great. I love that guy. He's a great player. But uh, I've heard he's been playing wing as well. So, um, you know, uh, it's easier to have like two relatively inexperienced wing and a more experienced fullback to run the, the, the defense there um, uh, from kicks, etc. So uh, low would be not be a bad option actually uh, for fire, but I think you should kind of look to the long term because uh, uh, Hugo is not going to be around for forever although until the world cup, next world cup i think is uh, more than likely but um to have a, to have a nice uh cover uh person who can like slot into that 15 position is going to be invaluable for them and he, as i said he's extremely durable but uh, what i find amazing is that uh, he's been all the talk or his absence has been all the talk this week uh, coming into this wheels um uh, match so it uh, shows you the chances that most people have for wheels and I kind of agree you know what I mean I'm a, I'm a Welshman myself but uh, you know it's a big ass to go to uh, Dublin eh, and uh, get a result but um, I, I came up with a kind of uh, what because the Welsh public is firmly behind this uh, this t team even though they haven't performed 100% and um, so for uh, a successful uh, outing for the Welsh, I would say to score two tries because uh, Ireland keeping Italy to nil uh, last time out was quite significant and uh, Easter B again, a uh, great uh, defensive coach he's turned into. Um, and uh, so I'd say if Wales can cross for two tries, that would be a success. If they lose, by 15 points or less that would be an a success too so that's what as a welshman i am looking at as a successful uh result on um saturday 
So uh, as for Ireland, I think uh, they won't take this game for granted. It'll be, uh, I think it'll be a, a, a good test, particularly in the first 20 minutes. Uh, I think they'll come through it, obviously, and, um, you know, they'll impose themselves on the game. But, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes, particularly in that full-back position. I mean, that's the most interesting question that we have this week to ponder. And it's a good one, I think. It's a good one for Ireland. It's a good one to look at the players they've actually got coming through to cover. And, uh, yeah, it bodes well for the future, the, all the options that they actually do have. I mean, Stockdale's in there as well, you know. He's in the squad and uh, he's, he's a, uh, a solid player in his own right. You know, didn't have the best uh, introduction to world rugby, but uh, he's also a, a good option there to try and go with. Um, so let's see what Farrell does. It's going to be interesting and I'm looking forward to the game. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you made it this far, um, I'm super close. So please like, subscribe, particularly subscribe. And uh, I'll see you for the next video. All right. Thank you very much. Bye bye.